original Nintendo controllers. They didn't make them much better than this. This was about as good as they made them back in the day. I realized that in all these nonsense videos that I've been making of cleaning games with spoons and cleaning games with bananas and stuff, that I actually neglected in showing you how to just take apart and clean basic controllers. There are a ton of videos floating out there of how to clean a controller. I'm gonna show you how to clean a controller. There's tons of those. What I wanna do is the very same, but I wanna show you with the basic tools because most people don't have all this equipment and all these fancy L. Doug kits that are over there that they've made themselves at home using all of the links that I keep forgetting to post. I just wanna show the basics of what you need to take apart a controller, clean it up, say you got one at a thrift store, a, a boot sale, a garage sale, something like that, and you just wanna clean it up to get it presentable. We're not gonna worry about rewiring or shorting the wire, any of that kind of a nonsense, recircuiting the boards, all that. We're just gonna show you how to clean the basics. After I film these, my goal is to take these, chop them up, make them more watchable, take out all of this rambling that's happening, and put it into something that's a little more bite-sized friendly. So, we got our NES controller. We got it right there. I'm gonna show you the tools that I'm gonna use. Phillips head screwdriver. This one, it's weird because you would think they would use something other than Phillips, but whatever, they use Phillips, good for us. This is a P1, I believe. You don't wanna go any lower than that. You don't wanna go any higher than that. Plastic scraper. Okay, this is just my standard, I think they're called Scrigets. They're on Amazon. I don't hate them. They're nice for removing stickers. They're also nice for scraping into corners, getting out gunk, stuff like that. They also have a little pocket clip if you want to be a giant dork. Pink erasers. These I love. You use them for cleaning contacts, and there's a couple other things that I'll show you on what you can use them for. Don't use them on shiny surfaces, though it will dull the shiny surface. A piece of computer paper. Okay, we're gonna take a piece of computer paper, eight and a half by 11, we're gonna fold it in half. That's gonna make it half of that. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna use this for. You probably already know, you might not know, but we'll get into it and you'll see. It's actually super useful in cleaning this stuff. Finally, paper towels and cleaning wipes. If you don't have cleaning wipes, any of the instances where I'm using the cleaning wipe, you can also replace it with just a paper towel and some all-purpose cleaner. It'll work the same way. I don't know if everyone still has a giant surplus of these floating around. I certainly do. So we'll get all this stuff out of the way, and we'll start to work on taking the screws out. I've actually haven't taken this one apart Oh, maybe an ever. This is my second controller from way back in the day. So let's see how she goes. But a lot of this stuff will be stuff that I'll, you know, cut out because I want to make shorter videos along the lines of my basic disassembly and cleaning videos, but I feel like you also might need some of the background on what I'm doing. Pretty much all of these had a lot more tension on them than I would have liked. So what I do is I unscrew them until I feel like they're pretty loose. And then you just kind of give it a lift and you see if it should, there we go, come right out. Nice thing about doing it this way is you can actually pick up this entire piece and you can just set it off to the side. So you don't have to worry about the screws bouncing out, you're losing them or anything, that's all there. If we were going to clean this back, if we were gonna um, whiten it, you would have to do something a little different. When we get to it, I'll show you what we can do to wipe all these down, all the corners and everything, but that'll be assumed that we'll take the screws out. We'll get to that. So here we have the board. Super simple, but the thing you wanna take note of is how this wiring goes. Okay, so this is specific. And once you see it a couple times, you'll understand, oh, this is how it goes back, that kind of thing. But you'll want to remember that because when you're putting it back together, it might not be obvious. It should be, but, you know. Okay. This board's about as simple as you can get. We're going to lift out this chip here. Not chip, this PCB here. 
Looking so nice. I mean, there's not much to it. You know, you have your contacts. That's about it. We'll set this aside for now. If you did have any really glaring issues, um, you're not really going to have any corrosion. These should all be fairly straightforward. They are numbered and lettered and everything else. Um, and what's actually interesting, if I remember right, the different colors are for the Famicom and the NES. But anyway, all your boards on there. We'll put this aside. I will be making a video of how to clean cords. That's a whole different thing that, that requires like scrubbing and a lot of delicate work. We'll get to that one. It's going to be controller cords, power cords, AV cords, everything else like that. That's going to be a whole, whole different thing. So here we have it. About as simple as it gets. These little membranes go behind the buttons like that. Boom. And there you go. These membranes press onto the board to indicate when the button is pressed. Simple as that. Now, we'll put these off to the side for now, the plastic bits, and we'll scrub them up. We'll give them a little bit of a cleaning. But in the meantime, the thing that I want to focus on right now are especially these, okay? So the button fits on top like that, and then as you press down, the contact presses onto the PCB, okay? If you have a controller that is not really recognizing inputs, part of what can be the problem are these little guys right here. In comes the white sheet of paper. Some of you have seen this trick before. I use it all the time. It makes sense to me. What you're going to do is you're going to press down on the button, exposing that little connection right there, and you're just gonna rub it on the piece of paper, okay? Like so. And you're gonna get a little bit of a black smudge, and that's what you want. You're basically just refreshing and cleaning up the contact, okay? So you'll do it on each one. If you need to wipe them off, you can. When I'm wiping these off, I tend to not use any liquid if I can help it. So I'll take a dry paper towel and just give them a good wipe off to clean everything. Might be a little grime here and there, no big deal. You could use a toothbrush in this instance if you wanted to. Um, I always have a couple of them floating around, but honestly, it, I'll show you why it doesn't really work. Okay, it does the same as the paper, as the paper towel does. Same thing on this one, you're just gonna take it and you're going to do a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Here's the thing. One and done, okay? You do not need to do this a whole bunch of times because as you can see from the marks here, we're actually removing some material. So you only need to do this one time. You don't have to go back here and I'm going to scrub it like crazy. I'm going to scrub it like crazy. One time, as long as you have a good press, and a good scrape and a good wipe, you should be just fine. Okay, don't forget your little start and your little select, and you should be fine. If you put it all back together and you notice that it still doesn't work, go back and try it again with a piece of paper, but just on the button that you don't think is working, okay? There's no reason to go above and beyond on any of this stuff because you don't necessarily want to take off too much. It's a very, very thin piece right there, and it's a very thin connection between the board and the buttons itself. So don't overdo it. It's very easy to overdo it in this instance. Okay. So now that we got our little membranes clean, we'll focus on the buttons. Again, this is a point where you'll see people and they'll say, oh, you got to soak these, grind these, gussy these up, all this other stuff. You really, really don't. Okay. You can take your toothbrush and just brush up all the corners, brush up all the gunk and everything, and that'll get it about as clean as you want it to. About now, you can break out your all-purpose cleaner or your disinfecting wipe if you want to, just to kind of give everything a good saturation. Don't use 
the cleaning wipe to scrub necessarily, I'm going to show you what to do instead. Yeah, we're not getting very much dirt off that anyway. You take your toothbrush and use your toothbrush to agitate the liquid that you applied using the cleaning wipe. And brush it in all different directions, turn it around, roll it around in your fingers, get the back, get the front, everything else. We'll get into if you wanted to clean up a controller for photographs, if you wanted to clean up a controller to sell it. We'll get into what you can do at this point. It involves uh, silica gel. It involves a little bit of heat to get a shine back on it. We're going to get into all that in a later video. It's not going to be this video. This is the basics. Same thing on this one. You just scrub it down. Looking so nice. Check the sides to see if you have any wear. So you got a little bit of wear on there, which is fine. But what you want to notice is if there's any sort of dirt that's left over on there. So if there's any dirt that's left over, you go in there with your scraper and you just give it a little scrape. Easy. Same thing on this one. Scrape this off. Scrape the insides, backsides, outsides. And last but not least, Start and select button. This one is just a membrane by itself, so you want to be careful. Again, I like I said with the other ones, I try to not use too much liquid on this. I want to just kind of keep this as nice as I can. Not get it wet. Don't stretch it. Don't rip it. Anything else. Now onto this little face plate. The places where you're going to have the most dirt are going to be these edges here. And you can probably see the edge right there. Got a lot of dirt on it, okay? So take in your plastic scraper. Heck, you could even do it with your plastic spoon. Just get in here and just scrape all the edges. And you don't necessarily wanna clean off everything. You just wanna work everything up so that you can come back in and scrape everything off. Wipe everything off, okay? So go in here, wipe all your edges. My table is noisy today. Wipe off all your edges, go back to the toothbrush and brush it out. And then I'm gonna flip it over as I brush it and I'm gonna brush upside down because that's going to allow all the material to fall down onto the actual surface. Pretty clever. Let's brush all that. Now these buttonholes, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Okay, the method that I prefer is to poke something down in there. You'll notice that this is the perfect size for it. And you just clean that out. Same thing on this one. Poke it in there, clean it out. Same thing on this one. We gotta be a little more clever about it. Poke it in there and you just work into each of the corners. Go back with your toothbrush and just brush all of the sides as best you can. Work everything up. Once you start to work everything up, turn it upside down so that you're brushing everything out. Looking so nice. Take your cleaning wipe for your all-purpose cleaner and work on the outside edges. Same thing. Take your brush and you want to work in the cleaner and all surfaces to get it worked up. And then you go in with your paper towel and you dry it off. It's a lot easier if every single time you do the same steps, it's a little bit more, the table's noisy today. There's a little bit more dirt on this side. So we'll get back in there with a brush. Let's see what we can't work up. Okay. Don't worry about the discoloration or anything else. We will get to that in a later video. For right now, this is looking fantastic. I'm like looking just to make sure. I'm like, really, is it fantastic? For this little guy, same thing. 
We're gonna flip it over. All the screws are gonna pop out. Hey, it worked. Same thing on this one. You're gonna take your scraper and you're just gonna work up before I lose these. There we go. Take your scraper, scrape up all the edges and corners. And you'll notice I'm keeping a fair angle on this just so that it'll drop all the dirt onto here. I've noticed that the camera actually doesn't pick up how much dirt is falling on here. And I'm guessing because it's a blue background, but there is a lot of dirt that falls on here, which is good. Cause then on here, I can just wipe these off, rinse these off. Don't have to worry about it. This one's a little crustier than I thought it would be, but that's okay. Come back in with our wipe. Okay, wipe down all those edges. Come in with a toothbrush. You guys are starting to get the method now. Toothbrush to agitate. Remember, go both directions. You don't just necessarily want to go in there. You want to use the opposite direction. Scrape out all the dirt, gunk, grime, everything else. Inside's looking pretty good. Check the outside. Do the same thing, just check for dirt. A little bit there, a little bit actually all along there. Get that going. Give it a good brush. Now you might be saying, hey, this is still looking like crap. This lettering is still looking dirty. Well, yes. But here's the thing, when we go to whiten it, that'll fix it. Okay, so there's really no real reason to worry about it right now, because when we go to whiten this whole controller, that stuff will clean up too. But you'll notice, if you take your toothbrush and you press down on one side and you have a heavy angle, you're gonna get shorter bristles, which means that they're gonna be tighter and stiffer, and you're gonna be able to get into those little crevices a little better. But like I said, when we do our whitening, that's gonna clean it up too. If you weren't going to do your whitening, what I would suggest is a stiffer brush, okay? So same thing as before, put down a little bit of liquid and then use your stiffer brush. And we'll do this on this one just because I know we're not gonna do the whitening anytime soon. You get your stiffer brush, and your stiffer brush will get into all the crevices. Satisfying. <laughs> there you go. Okay. These are a lot stiffer bristles. Get out of there. These are a lot stiffer bristles than these are. Um, but these you don't want to use too much on surfaces because you can see a little tiny bit of just, did it scrape the plastic? Not in a bad way, but it scraped the plastic a little bit more than what you necessarily want to do. Looks great, though. So, put this off to the side for now. We'll grab this little board. Reassembly time. Nintendo was very smart in how they did a lot of this stuff. And I'll show you what I mean. This can go in literally any direction. Pretty clever. These just have tabs that they fit into. Pretty clever. This little guy, the hole matches up to this. Drop that down on there. Also pretty clever. Here's where it gets a little weird. You have to fit this over that. I guess it's not that weird, but it can be weird if, I don't know, it's your first time. And then this little guy goes like that. So make sure you'll have to lift it up because if you try to do this while it's down, you won't get them over their little spindles, okay? So you gotta lift it up and then you make sure that they get wrapped around, that gets wrapped around, everybody's happy. So then we take our board, <gasps> it lines up, okay? So see what I did there? These three posts are gonna line up with three posts on here. And you'll notice the shape and everything else lines up the way that it's supposed to as well. Since this cord is very old, 
and very dry, it goes right back into how it's supposed to. Okay, so it kind of helps out a little bit because you know exactly how it's supposed to go back in. If the cord didn't have this permanent curve in it, you would just have to look and see how it wants to go back in. And sometimes there's no shame in using the original video when you started filming this to look and see how this goes. But for reference, it goes like this. Take your back panel. Should be fairly obvious. Your back panel is going to line up this hole with this. And then sandwich the whole thing. Make sure everything fits snug. Make sure there's nothing that's sticking over, nothing that's pushing out or anything weird. If you set this down, the whole back will stand up again because of the buttons. So you kind of have to hold it up for the rest of the time. No big deal. So you pop your screws back in there. Watching me struggle to put back in screws because I'm wearing gloves will probably be cut from the longer video. Maybe not, though. Maybe it'll be in the DVD extras. We'll see. That would be really cool, though, if there was a DVD of cleaning techniques and you could, like, jump to a specific technique and watch that video. Maybe when I get my repository done. I'm not going to show you how to clean these screws. Again, that'll be in the advanced cleaning and breakdown and everything else. Um, method's pretty simple, though. Fiberglass pen, and you're just going to use those to agitate and shine those screws. We only have the one that really needs it. All six of them, it couldn't hurt. We're looking at about five and a half turns. You don't want to do it too tight. You want to do it until it's snug. That one was like seven. Yeah, so they're still a little loose. So you want to go around and snug up the ones that still have some play. But at least now you can turn it. Hey, based on this video alone, if you're still watching, in the comments... Which hand am I? Am I left-handed or am I right-handed? Just based on what I'm doing right now. So based on what I'm doing right now, which hand do I predominantly use? I'd be really curious to know what people think. Um, so if you are still watching, throw that in the comments below. What do you think? Left-handed or right-handed? Ta-da! <laughs> So, ugh, all this dirt, and then I put it in the dirt because I'm a genius. So there you go. Basic cleaning and breakdown of an original Nintendo controller. Press all the buttons to make sure it works. Look how just naturally I sink back into this as though like the ha my hands have been molded for the last, I don't know, 30, 30... Three years, 32 years. How long have I been playing with this controller? For the last uh, whole bunch of years that my hands just naturally go back into this and go, yeah, this is how you play video games. Yep. Castlevania, Mario, everything. I love these controllers. Ah. Tools we used. Phillips head screwdriver. Let's take out the back. This is one of the few instances where a Nintendo thing requires a Phillips. Scraper. You can use any kind of scraper you want. These, not so much. Um, the other one I would potentially use is the stick scraper. I don't know. Sometimes having a wider scrape base is nicer because you can get in the good angles and everything. Some kind of a scraper. The pink eraser we actually didn't have to use. I would only use the pink eraser if there was um, like a lot of gunk and dirt on the inside in weird places or weird corners, what I would use it for is to get into those corners really well and pull that out. Luckily, I didn't have to do that. Toothbrush, I used this one and I used my stiff bristle, um, but you can use either one. Cleaning wipes, because all day long cleaning wipes. Paper towels, because all day long paper towels. And then a sheet of computer paper just to clean these up. These contacts and connections will work no problem. Um, I'll test it just to make sure. If they don't work, 
See, look at that. I just, I just default back into that. If they don't work, I'll come back and I'll make a video showing you which buttons don't work and the teardown. So if you see that at the end of this video, you know that they don't work. Otherwise, this will be a fun series. Um, let me know what controllers you want to see. I have all of the main line controllers all the way up to 8th gen. And then I have a couple of the 9th gen controllers. So let me know what you want to see. If you want to see some things be broken down and cleaned. If it's an obscure controller, I always love trying to get my hands on those. Um, I've got Dreamcast, I've got Saturn, I've got a whole bunch of these to make. So this will be a fun series um, to fix up the buttons. Nintendo controllers, even the third party ones, the third party ones, the weird ones, the specialty ones, everything else. The breakdown is going to be pretty much the same. The functionality is pretty much going to be the same. The buttons are pretty much going to be the same. So this would apply for a lot of different things, including Famicom. That would apply as well. When we get to Super Nintendo, the Super Nintendo ones are going to be a little different. They have shoulder buttons. They have a couple of different things to it. I'm excited for that one. As always, thank you for watching and putting up with all of this nonsense. Like I said, these are going to get chopped up and put into smaller versions just so people can consume these a little better. I know that some of you have said before that you like when I walk you through these things. Always happy to. Find me on Instagram at Restore and Replay, Twitter at Restore and Replay. I'm getting better at those two. I'm always on Discord as well. I got some cleaning channels on a couple of different Discords. Uh, the Game Eye Discord, I'm on there. So find me on Discord to on a, on Discord. It's L Doug E L D O U G. Send me a message. Um, I don't know. Let me know if there's anything you need help cleaning. I've gotten a stack of a couple of different things from people that they want cleaned, which is always fun. Kicking around the idea of a Patreon. I don't know. At any rate, Nintendo Entertainment System Controller. Basic disassembly and cleaning. How about that? I'm also really excited because I'm going to go try this. And I have a stack of original... Nintendo RPGs, Bard's Tale, Ultima, stuff like that, um, that I will put this little guy to use. So until next time, I'm going to keep cleaning. Thanks, guys.